Hello, my name is Stephen Redman and welcome to another episode of Pastor's Library. This is the channel where we discuss all things to do with theology books, be they books on a reading list for a seminary course or for a bachelor's or master's degree in biblical studies or theology, or simply whether it's a book that's caught your interest seeing it at a friend's house or on your pastor's office or perhaps online. Today we're going to talk about a particular favourite commentary for myself. If you like what we have to say, please remember to give us a thumbs up. Please remember to subscribe and click on the bell if you haven't done already. That way we try to get the message out to as many people as possible. So thank you so much for engaging with us today. Today I want to talk about my favourite commentaries on the book of Jude. The book of Jude is probably the smallest thing in your Bible. Well, it's, it's down there, isn't it? It's, it's very few verses. It fits on a single page. And whereas you've got a little bit of competition from 3 John, ultimately, this is a small part of Scripture. And if you get a, a compilation commentary, a one-volume or two-volume commentary, you might find you get almost as many pages in that as you would in some other combination commentaries. Uh, but let me start by just saying to you, there's a couple of general books that you could read to get an idea of what where you're going with Jude. One is Richard Borkham's Word Biblical Themes on Second Peter and Jude. Let me say to you, most of these commentaries feature Second Peter and Jude. It's by exception when they don't. And the reason is, of course, there is a lot of overlap between the two of them. Uh, but this 1990 volume, with simply 114 pages, will tell you a lot about the themes that, that uh, Jude sees in his simple message to us, and uh, you will find that helpful. It's a low-cost book. This book, well, it's by Andrew Chester and Ralph Martin, but the relevant bit is by Ralph Martin. Uh, this goes into the New Testament theology of Jude, and... I love this whole series, but Ralph Martin writes this section very, very well, and it will give you a background to the theology of the book. Um, the NIVAC uh, commentary, which is, again, to Peter and Jude, is written by Douglas Moo. Moo makes some comparisons with popular music, and I think because he's focusing mainly on the application, he, he definitely has something worth listening to, although... This is probably not my favourite commentary, but it's certainly not to be ignored. Now, um, I mentioned multiple commentaries. This one, the 10th volume of the New Interpreter's Bible commentary. It includes Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 and 2 Thessalonians, 1 and 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1 and 2 Peter, 1, 2 and 3 John, Jude and Revelation. Jude is written by Dwayne Watson, and it's simply two dozen pages written in 2015. The book costs you £63 and is great value because it's commentaries and all these others. And at 2015, it's also still bang up to date, really. Uh, so uh, I, I can always commend that to you, but still not a great deal of detail. Uh, this is a commentary by William F. Brosend II. And it's part of the Cambridge University commentary in the New Testament. And it's 30 pages uh, written in 2004 on Jude. Not a lot of detail. Nicely bound book. Got a lot more on James, which is an unusual one, James and Jude together. But I think they were keeping the brothers uh, in the same book. As we get on to ones with a little bit more detail, this is the Abingdon Press Abingdon New Testament Commentary on Jude and 2 Peter. It's written by Stephen J. Krafchik. Uh, it was written in 2002. It's got 70 pages on Jude. Now, this is a lot better. And because it's dealing with Jude and 2 Peter, you're getting this overlap and a little bit of maybe what is written in 2 Peter commentary is a direct relevance to Jude. And I have to say to you, I really enjoyed this. I found this very accessible. And this is a book I would probably always have a look at 
if I was uh, studying uh, Jude at the time. Now, this is the New Testament Library Commentary uh, by Lewis Donaldson. This is a 2013 book, and this only has 43 pages uh, of direct text on Jude's letter. But I, I have to say, I like this series, and I very much like this volume. And um, it's not to be ignored. It might be only a small amount of detail. And I think ultimately, if you're really going to study Jude, you probably need to get one of the volumes that has a bit more detail in it. And we're going to come to those in a moment or two. 50 pages in 2012, written by David De Silva in the Padia commentary on the New Testament, which again is James and Jude. Now, I have to say it's merely be 50 pages, but I really felt David De Silva did us proud with this commentary. I really like it. I think it gives you a great deal of detail in a small amount of pages. And whereas it, it, it isn't going to be the most detail of any of these I'm going to offer to you, it isn't to be ignored. It's a very good commentary. Now, I'm a big fan of the New Beacon Bible commentaries, and this one is by Daniel Powers, and it covers 1 and 2 Peter and Jude. And 53 pages are given over to Jude. Now, again, similar to the David De Silva one in terms of volume of pages, but I, I found this very engaging. I mean, it's the sort of length of 53 pages and just sit down and read it in an evening. It really is excellent. And it offers a lot from, I feel, a very unbiased viewpoint. Now, reading the New Testament is a, a great commentary series. This is by Earl Richard, who's written 1 Peter Jude and 2 Peter commentaries in one book. 60 pages are on Jude. Uh, this was a volume written in 2000. This series, of course, endeavours to give you a verse-by-verse -verse commentary plus go into the theology behind the book. And uh, it's very good at that. I, I like the way it handles the theology. This is certainly a very excellent commentary to engage with. Now, I'm going to go on to my three top quality commentaries, which are all more pages. This one, written in 2006 by Peter Davids, uh, is the pillar New Testament commentary on 2 Peter and Jude, and 110 pages are about Jude, 2006 publication date. I have to say I, I got a lot out of this. I quite like Davids. He seems to me to have a good insight, gives a, a couple of things that you won't get in the previous commentaries. You'll, you'll see them because he is going into a greater length of detail. Possibly slightly better, though, is the Baker exegetical commentary on Jude and 2 Peter by Jean Green. Now, I really do like this Jean Green one. Uh, you've got 137 pages dedicated to Jude. It was published in 2008. And I think Green has a fabulous handle on Jude. He gives us really good insight. And the way he draws on the context of the day and the understanding that the first century readers had is absolutely excellent. I like what he's got to say about Enoch in there as well. This is a, a very excellent commentary. I suppose I would always want this in my library. However, there is for me, when it comes to Jude, an absolute clear winner. It's not the new international commentary on the New Testament, because there isn't one on Jude. It isn't a new international Greek Testament commentary, because there isn't one on Jude. And I think things like this are are quite clear. It isn't a Hermeneia because there isn't one on Jude. And whether or not there will be a story of God on Jude, I don't know, but there isn't one as yet. This is really quite clear. There are lots of series that don't have a volume on Jude. 
And I know it's because it's a single page in our Bibles, but ultimately, it to me, it's a very important one, particularly as a pastor. I find my preaching often goes back to Jude because Jude has so much to say in our 21st century to the church. So this is the word biblical commentary by Richard J. Borkham. Now, Richard Borkham is one of my all time favorites. I uh, initially bought uh, this in 1996, a 357 page commentary, which of course is devoted to Jude and to Peter and the overlap between them. But in 2014, they issued a revised version which has, uh, I think, 19 pages more. And I have to say to you, the revised version, I think, is worth having uh, for 19 pages. I really do think it's worth having. And um, I would suggest to you that Richard Borkham, who has done more work than I am aware of from anybody else on the brothers of Jesus, uh, James, Jude, uh, Joseph, and so on, I think that this is a really excellent, I think it's the defining commentary on Jude at this moment in time. If you know of something that's got more detail and more technical background, then let me know. But from my point of view, this is definitely my favourite commentary and I get so much from it. I cannot express to you my understanding was opened by this commentary. And, and I really think that if you haven't got one of these and you're interested in Jude or indeed to Peter, then what are you messing about at? This is the commentary to have on the subject and an excellent one for your library. So with a lot of options missing and I've, I've got two or three commentaries I haven't even mentioned to you today, which I I don't think are worth mentioning, to be honest. Um, but with this one, to my mind, as a clear winner, and the other ones I've mentioned to you following up behind, I hope this has enriched your understanding. And if it has, please give us a thumbs up. Please remember to subscribe and click on the bell. That way you'll know as soon as we release another episode of Pastor's Library. But until then, all I've got to say to you is, bye! <laughs>